Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have an emergency overtime service call for an LG Multi-V system. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. Today we have an emergency service call. We are doing overtime hours. You can see the sun is about to set here in New York City. Got a beautiful view there. Anyways, I got the cover off here, but let's check it out. We have an error. You can see 421, one is for compressor one, but this system only has one compressor. And, and that error code is gonna be CH42. You're gonna use the first two numbers if you look at the manual. Also, I got a picture where the indoor unit had an error code for CH43, and they're kind of referring to the same thing. So I have the LG HVAC service dash business app CH42. It says outdoor unit low pressure sensor fault. Cause of error, outdoor unit low pressure sensor open or short. So there's a good chance that a low pressure sensor is bad. Also, let's go back. Let's type in error code CH43. And that says outdoor unit high pressure sensor fault. Cause of error, outdoor unit high pressure sensor open or short. So that sensor is a thermistor and they actually might be two thermistors on one cable. I gotta open this up to see what's going on. But guys, I think we just had a catastrophic failure because as I was coming up here, I could just smell something is off. And if you ever drop like, I know this is refrigerant 410A. It's colorless and odorless, but you know what's not colorless and odorless? Oil. Have you ever spilled vacuum pump oil in the back of your van and it stayed in there for a long time? Then you know what I'm talking about. That stuff smells and it makes me nauseous. And I know that smell very well. Let's look on the bottom here. Look at all that. Look at all that oil, man. Look at all that oil. You should not have a filter case. I totally got to get rid of this. I'm gonna put my hand across this here. That's not water. That's oil. Then down here, something smells weird. That's oil. Oil everywhere. Something exploded in here, guys. Oh gosh. This app does not allow you to screenshot any of this, but it says error type CH 4243. Okay, sensor error of low pressure or high pressure. The error point, it says the low and high pressure sensor value is abnormal. Okay, and what does it say here? The main reasons, number one, basically low or in high pressure sensors connected bad, or the sensors are bad themselves, or you got a PCB defect. So it says right there, if you follow this chart, it says, is the sensor or PCB connection good? If not, plug it in. If it is, it says, does it work normally after PCB replacements? They want you to change the board. That's awesome. But if it does, you're good. My girlfriend's calling me. <laughs> uh, real quick, if the PCB is good, you're good. If not, change, change the sensors. I got a special adapter for R410A fittings right there. I think it's three A's, then it goes down to quarter inch because the standard hoses are quarter inch. We got three pipes here. It's a heat recovery system. It has heating and cooling all year round. Just as I suspected. And it's a brand new set of gauges too. Zero. Zero. Zero PSIG, my friend. You know you've been doing HVAC too long. When you Before you even get to the unit, you can smell it. <laughs> I smell that oil. Look at all that. Look at how you get up here, man. Look at all that. That's all oil. We gotta go through this staircase, through that door, come out, go all the way around. I got my nitrogen tank tank up here. Maybe it's something I can see visually. I hope it's not the coil, man. That would be a problem. I got my nitro tank with the regulator. I, I usually put on like gauges with no hoses i just put on probes because you don't want to lose the refrigerant but i already knew this thing blew and we're gonna need to run nitro through the system so i brought this all up also 
I got the Big Blue Sub Zero. All right, this is a liquid leak check solution. Let's do like a visual inspection and see what we can do. Why is this disconnected? Also, you, I don't know, you guys probably can't, you can see a little bit. That discharge line in there looks burnt as well. Uh, for the fact that most all that oil, this compressor might be bad as well and might need a replacement along with the fix. And it's just a sad story here. What can you do? But it's gonna be a beautiful sunset. We gotta do a thorough search up here because even though there's oil across the floor and all over that dryer, there's oil up here. So something up here blew. I took off the cover for the compressor. Not sure if it blew through the terminals or what, but there's oil all, all over back here. So something here is leaking bad. Wonder if I could see it before anything. But for the fact that you got all the oil on the floor, if we fix that leak, that means we lost a ton of oil, that compressor will fail. So most likely we need to do a leak repair, compressor replacement, and when you change the compressor, you gotta change the inverter board. Who knows, man? Who knows what else went bad here? This unit needs some serious, serious love. Let's see if we could see something before we add that nitro. If you guys look in here, we got 10,000 pipes in here. Why do they make overcomplicate these things? But I'm telling you right now, everything looks dry from up here. It looks like anywhere from here and down, there's some sort of leak. There's a bunch of oil down in that corner. I hope it's not in the coil. I wonder what blew here. Where was there a weak point? Personally, I don't see anything, but I see like at least five to eight different pipes and sections that have like oil on it so it could be anything right now let's pressurize this thing let's open up this tank hopefully i have good enough pressure and we're going to charge to the high side yeah i got a decent amount of pressure i hear it filling up let's see if we can hear anything Definitely got pressure in this one. I have another tank. I don't know how much is in there, but. Oh gosh. Hopefully it's something easy and uh, we're just praying that it's not the coil. Can we hear it. Sometimes the leak like this, you could probably hear it. I don't hear anything. I see oil over here too. Anyways, power is off. Also, look at this power box. This thing is just hanging, man. Wonder where this thing blew. All right, guys, I had to take down the whole electrical panel because I can't really get in here. But I'm telling you, I hear this thing. It's somewhere here. It is somewhere in here. Let's take a look around. Oh, come on. And it's getting dark, guys, it's getting dark. Pray for me. Uh, it's a little hard to see. Let me see if I get my camera in here. Ooh, lights falling and everything. But when I move this, something is leaking right here. Right here, something is leaking. Oh man, there's so many pipes in here. Something right in there is leaking. I need this. Oh man. I think it's some sort of rub out. Something right here is leaking. I can hear it because when I move that, it makes a noise. Look at these two pipes, they're so close to each other. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right, let's, let's see what we find. I'm sure y'all can hear that now. Hear that difference? Rub out right here. Big leak. Somewhere here. I'm gonna try to get my camera in here. I found it. Right here. You hear that? Yeah. 
that, I think it's done. All right, I believe that's just like a little solenoid there. Problem is, the problem is it's a problem. I'm alone today and whenever you light a torch, you need a licensed torch operator and a licensed fire guard. So we're gonna have to probably come back to try to do this. I think the best bet for the fastest option would be to probably try to patch that if possible. If not, then you gotta change the valve, brace it at the proper connections where it's copper to copper. But that is, uh, it's leaking from the valve itself. I wanna see if maybe there's like, you can hear the difference. I'll, I wanna see if there's like a hole in it, if I could even try to repair this, try to put a, take off the electrical and braze it if that holds and the compressor turns out okay most likely the low pressure control held it out but you know what people were resetting this thing and there it goes to show you man don't just reset it it's not gonna solve the problem it shut down for a reason uh, i'm gonna meg out the compressor because you can't start this without the refrigerant if that turns out probably come back we'll try to patch it see if it works if not we probably got to change that valve and then also there's so much oil on the floor there is oil in the refrigerator and stuff but you leaked out so much oil that was sitting in this coil most likely if we can get it running that would be nice but we got to come back to change that valve and hold the compressor and when you change the compressor you need the inverter board and i'm looking at this sensor over here when it runs low on the refrigerant you can see part of this actually melted so this thermistor could be bad as well and just it is what it is just another day in paradise boys all right guys put the panel back up it's officially nighttime here this is the last thing we're gonna do for now i got my mega meter here this is the klein tools et 600 i'm gonna set this to 500 volts so i got we got three connections here got three connections basically one connection to ground you're gonna test 500 volts either I have the other lead if you see it's red it's kind of hard to see I have it to the copper to the suction line or you could put it to the casing of the motor but I don't want to deal with that because there's paint on them on that casing and it might give you off reading let's test it below 100 this thing is done Oh, look at that 4,000 mega ohms okay oh hold on a second this thing fell off hold up why did that happen hold on let's get a good connection here Jesus it's hard to do with my left hand on my righty hold up okay let's test this out again All right, set it off a little low, but as you can see, as I'm applying 534 volts, it's going up. That line checks out. It came down. You want to want this side to go down to zero volts before you move on to the next one. Let's check one more. Test. Ooh, okay, but it's coming up. It's coming up. Okay checks out let the voltage go to zero five four three two one zero safe to move on to the last one and let's test that out oh starts off real low but you see that it's coming back up 530 volts above two above three thousand mega ohms and it passed four thousand we are right over here this compressor actually checks out as far as the windings oh wow all right i have my meter set to ohms and every is continuity at the same time i'm gonna check between the first two we have continuity and we got 0 0.7 0 0.6 0 0.5 next two we have continuity which is good we got a 0 0.6 and then the last two 0 0.5 for a three-phase compressor you should have the same ohm reading so mega meter checks out 
resistance across all three windings check out and you don't want continuity i'm checking from one terminal to the casing of the motor nope and then let's also go to the copper here you don't want continuity nope next terminal no it's hard to see i know no i do have a separate video for that but anyways this thing checks out in every way possible while the compressor is off of course the next test will be once you start it up make sure you don't have high amps and it ramps up accordingly but right now this thing is good i think right now the best thing is to come back with like acetylene or run nitro through the system let's try to braze that shut charge it up after a good vacuum and leak test make sure everything's good and try to start it up because nine hotel rooms have no air conditioning and they're getting comps right now hundred dollars a night and it ain't nothing close to those prices what they charge here so it is what it is so the best thing to do is come back tomorrow tomorrow saturday do some overtime and try to get this up and running for these people it is what it is but it's worth a shot and then after that change that solenoid valve and because we lost all the all the oil i don't know if we pump oil try to pump oil back in here or just because we got the spare parts maybe change the compressor with the inverter board and give it a shot but we're gonna try to run it like this the way it is we'll see if they can pump some oil in there that would be the best thing to do and save the compressor but right now let's try to fix that leak and get them going all right guys we're leaving the power off for this one and we're gonna see what we can do but we're gonna have to make some hopefully some temporary fixes and long-term fixes and it is what it is friday night if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week i'll catch you all next time